Hey everybody, Brian over here, and in today's video, we're going to be going over a really cool car in a segment that's come a long way. Today we're working with the 2021 Toyota Sienna XSE. Now, I had just made a video on the XLE all-wheel drive after having it posted for like a half an hour. It really wasn't what I wanted, so I'm redoing it on this car since the XLE all-wheel drive that I sent home is uh, it's gone. So this van is very similar, just has a sportier flair and a, a little bit of a sportier feel. The van segment has come a long way. Funny story, I actually learned how to drive on my grandma's minivan. It was an old Chrysler, no, it was a Plymouth Voyager. Totally fishbowl with no tints. What a classic, roll up windows and everything. The tranny went on that thing. But uh, yeah, here it is. With the XSC, you can see the styling on the wheels. You got a lot of black accents over here. Moving on to the back, a lot of sharp lines. It's very dramatic. Without looking try hard, you know, you still have that Toyota look to it. The black is very sharp, very menacing and powerful. It has a very strong appearance. Of course, it has Toyota Safety Sense, which if you're new to Toyota, it's a frontal collision system where you have uh, pre-collision with pedestrian detection. You're also getting automatic high beams, lane departure alert, and adaptive cruise control. New for the van, you also have standard LED lights. So the lights are gonna be very bright here with a nice low fog light, that's all LED. Let's move on to some of the outside things. We'll go into spacing and then we'll do technology. All right, so onto the back of the van, it has foot activated lift gate. Opens right up, one kick motion. You gotta get your foot under there. And people wonder, oh, do I have to push the button to close it? No, nope, it's a one kick motion on the way down, which I'll show you after I demonstrate the seats. So if you're new to Sienna's, the seats actually stow away on the inside. So I'll demonstrate on this one. Let me just move the, uh, the floor mats real quick. So you'll see a number one and a number two. To stow it away, you'll actually only use number one. You just give it a pull towards you and it kind of just falls into place. You can push it down a little bit and the carpet comes over like that. Now to put it back in, you start with number one and then you move your way to number two. So all I do is kind of like a bicep curl up and it goes up on its own. You can be a little rough with these things too. They're built to last. And I pull this and it stops on its own. And of course my anti-whiplash headrest comes right up. To close, the hatchback it's the same motion as i opened i got to get under the bumper and it's going to give me a warning bell once it's about to close there it is so it beeps once for two seconds almost and then it does three fast beeps to let you know that it's going to close now on to the side door You'll see a little Wi-Fi looking symbol here. All you do is aim underneath at that. Opens right up. Now, another question I get a lot with the vans, especially people new to the Sienna is how do I move the seats? How do I adjust things? You have a slider lever here, which takes place of where the bar would be over here. So once you pull on that, you can slide it forward and back. But before, I move this seat, say I don't have the aisle, all I do is pull this up and the seat kind of just does an ab crunch like it's working out the abs for spring break and then you pull this and it'll slide or once crunched up you can just slide it on its own. So it kind of bypasses a little lever there and you can get in and out very easily. Here's what the space looks like in the back. You can see how there's variation of reclining available to you which is nice. I'll go in the back real quick. In the back, I have some cup holders, little windows without a privacy shade, my own ventilation, my own reading lights on both sides. And on the passenger side, we have a USB and USB-C. For those of you that are my followers and you've seen my Tacoma review, you'll know how I feel about the USB-C. But moving on. As I get out, say I wanna put the seat back in its position, it's very simple. All I do is pull the slider button, 
which is going to be tough to do with one hand. But I pick where I want it to go and I lock it into place by pushing this back. Now it's locked into the floor and I just take this, push it down, ready to roll. And while I'm in here, I have my privacy shade here and a nice big window that opens down almost all the way. And this just pulls up and it clips into these. And then I have my ventilation here. And I also have a separate control for the ventilation here. And interestingly enough, you'll see I can do two separate temperatures now, one on each side of the back, where it used to be just a temperature as a whole. So let me put this back. Moving on towards the front, I have another couple cup holders. And here we go again, common theme, USB with USB-C. So I'm not sure how I feel about these. I feel like Apple is trying to weasel their way into things, but I don't know what this little guy is for. If anybody knows what this little uh, fin here is for, nobody's had an answer yet, please let me know. Maybe it's to stop things from sliding. I know it's not a handle to pull, but speaking of handles to pull, when you're getting in and out, they give you these nice handles, which help you grip on the way in and out. That's new, they used to be small. Now it's, you know, for people of all heights, they can, I mean, this thing can handle some weight. Let me know what you think, Sienna people, or people in the van market that have had other vans. What do you think so far? Then to close it up, you just give it another kick motion. And there it goes. I'll give you a little view of the front while I work my way over to the other side. Notice how the mirrors are taken off of the door corner. The mirrors are now put on the door, so you have more visibility here. It's part of the TNGA platform, which I'll get into in another video, but that basically just means advanced frames for better crashing and better driving. Closes right up. Remember, the van has to be off and the key fob on you for this to work. Let's go inside. Oh, you know what, real quick. With the smart key, which looks like this for the Sienna, It's not a very fancy key. Toyota keeps things simple and old school. It's lightweight, which is nice. Almost to the point of feeling a little on the cheap side, but I don't think Toyota would go super cheap on these because these things last a long time. I bet this thing could take a beating even though it feels lightweight, kind of like a G-Shock watch. Yeah, I'm a watch guy. You got controls to the doors, controls to the, uh, the automatic doors and the hatchback here, but if you leave it in your pocket and you never want to touch it, you can lock it on the door handle. So I can lock it like this. Now it's locked. I can unlock it like this, and it does my door. If I grab the passenger door handle on the outside, it'll unlock the whole van. I have a video, which will be in the description, about a couple cool, uh, well, one important tip for saving battery life and preventing car theft. So check that video out. That's been my most supported video so far. Very happy to hear I've helped a lot of people. Anyway, moving on inside, I have the seat adjustments here for forward and back, up and down with a twist, recliner, and lumbar support. Onto the door card, I have auto down and auto up windows all around. That's a feature we're seeing standard in all of the TNGA cars. If you're wondering what that means, it's Toyota new global architecture. Like I mentioned, it's the best driving, best crashing cars. We're moving everything to TNGA. As a Toyota guy, you can feel the difference. But anyway, one hard click down, all the windows go down automatically without touching. One hard click up, and they come up automatically. Then I have my window lock with a little LED button that'll show me. And then I have the door lock buttons here with two little nubbies for the lock. That's a standard thing you see on Toyota. I have the left toggler, neutral, and right toggler for the side mirrors. Of course, I'll leave it in neutral because I'm not going to adjust those. Let me jump in and start it up because it's a little warm outside today. It is a push button start since it has the smart key. And since it's a hybrid and all of the new Siennas are hybrid, I might not hear the engine when I start it. So here's what you see when you start it up. So you see the needle lifts from the off position. You get the ready symbol in green. Pro tip, that's how you know your hybrid is ready to drive. If this stuff is lit up, but you don't see the ready symbol and you don't see the needle lifted up, it's not ready to drive. 
So let me make sure my AC is on. That's good. I hope the vent isn't too loud. I'm just, I always wear long sleeves, so I get a little warm. It's not that hot outside. It's only, uh, it's only 87 degrees in September, but it is what it is. There's worse heat out there. All right, moving on to the buttons. I can actually turn off the power door option, so it's a quick slide. Just grab the door handle and slide open. Lock and gas door, so here's the button right there. These all light up at nighttime, by the way. It's hard to see, but you get a nice light blue. I love the Toyota blue. I can turn off my traction control and vehicle stability control with this. So use that uh, to your advantage if you have the skill level to handle that. Say you're parked and you get a lot of snow, you'd want to turn that off to get out of your parking spot. Other than that, leave the feature on. When you turn the car off, it, re, uh, it, it reinstalls itself, so it's a separate time every time. That's for my automatic high beams. So if the headlights are on auto, and that's forward, when this is on, I get automatic high beams. But I'm actually going to put this back in parking so the lights light up blue inside. I can even change the brightness to the uh, speedometer here. That's a little that's a little symbol of a speedometer with a light bulb. I can go brighter or dimmer. So it's gonna look like this. See, so at nighttime, if it's a little too bright for me, and then I have my odometer and trip right there. And that'll go through the odometer. Believe it or not, it's got 3600 on it. Then I can clear by pressing and holding, clear by pressing and holding, service interval, and back to the odometer. On the side of the steering wheel, if I pull this down, I can actually telescope the steering wheel and raise it up and down. So it's nice. You can put that perfect spot and push that up to lock it in. Nothing really going on on this side besides the power button and my hazards for letting the awesome Middletown New York drivers know to slow it down and not hit my Sienna. Moving on to the steering wheel. I have the buttons for operating the MID, which is this little screen here, the helper screen, that's called multi-information display, and select and back. So I'll kind of go through the menus here. If I'm going side to side, the different icons will light up. There's my settings menu. I can even go up and down and change some of my settings. If you go to vehicle and press and hold the OK button, I can even change the uh, volume to the door opening. If I go down, I can even change the opening adjustment for the hatchback. Pretty cool. I have all my other safety settings here. So I got road sign assist, parking stability brake. That's gonna pretty much break on its own if you're backing up and it senses something and you don't brake on time. Rear cross traffic alert is gonna let me know if I'm uh, backing up and there's a car driving by. Parking sonar is gonna start beeping at me and the MID will show you a little overhead view of the van and it'll tell you front and back how close you get into stuff. The beep gets faster as you get closer and it goes to a uh, flat line beep once you're about to hit. Blind spot monitor. That's the little orange light here on the corner of the Toyotas that have it. It'll light up solid orange when you're in your blind spot and then if you hit the signal to go in there, it's gonna strobe at you. It's not gonna beep, but it'll strobe. Both of these will actually strobe at you while it beeps if your rear cross traffic alert senses somebody's behind you uh, when you're backing up. There's my pre-collision system, which I can turn on and off or adjust, and I can even change the settings to my lane trace assist, which is the van trying to stay in the center of the lane when you're in your cruise control. So lots of information here. When I see the, the menu with the, the car with the eye symbol, I can see my hybrid system, I can see my individual tire pressures. Looks like we're gonna get some air in the back there. And uh, some information about the drive. If you have an all-wheel drive version, there'll even be a page for your all-wheel drive control, which is nice. I can see my audio, the navigation, and the leaf menu is where people like to be because you get your digital speed and you get your distance to empty at a glance. The MID is a great place to see a bunch of different information while driving. I have my outside temp, time, what gear I'm in. So check this out, I can keep my eyes up here and I know I'm in drive because it says drive right down there. And I know if I'm park or not. Maybe I'm accidentally in neutral instead of drive, it'll tell me right there. So it helps you keep your eyes up. This is what would be the RPMs. So it'll bounce down when it's charging itself. This will be normal driving and that's gonna be when you're kind of stepping on it. There's my engine temperature and have a very legible uh, speed readout for the speedometer. 
with my, my fuel there. And if you forget what side your, your uh, gas cap is on, there's a little arrow right there to remind you. Simple and easy to read. Helps keep the eyes up. On the XSE, I have some nice orange stitching here on the steering wheel, which is all done by hand. I also have some orange stitching on the interior. And believe it or not, I have a very sporty design with some orange stitching on the seats. Let me just show you a view of the back real quick since I'm turning around. Sporty. All right, moving on to the tech. On this stock, I have DRL off, so that's gonna be incognito, auto, so it'll sense when it's dark out and put the headlights. Of course, you got daytime running lights with this one. Parking lights so I can be seen while I'm parked and see inside, and then regular manual lights. Whenever the lights are on, I got fog light control here. So say this is on, I'll get a couple symbols. The little A here means my auto high beams are on and ready to go. And then you'll see the blue symbol for high beams go when they need to. There's my fog lights. I guess that's supposed to be the picture of a light shining through the fog. Kind of weird, but that symbol's existed forever. And then the light bulb is an important one because that lets you know when the headlight system is on. So if I'm an auto and it's not dark out, I'm not gonna get the green bulb because it's not dark enough to justify the interior lights and the tail lights down back. So I'm still gonna have daytime runner lights when I'm in auto, but I'm not gonna have the full lighting system until you see that. Makes sense? Fun little fact, if you give it a light tap, you'll get a three signal click. See? Great for merging lanes. Of course, the horn is right in the middle. I can pick up and hang up phone calls with this button. This is the select and back for the MID. I can change the volume to the phone call or the music, and I can make voice commands right here. So when I press that, I wait till it beeps, then I speak. And if you're telling it to uh, call somebody, you have to say their name exactly the way it appears in your phone. So if you got a nickname for somebody, you gotta call them by their nickname. You can train the vehicle uh, to recognize your voice, which is gonna be in your settings on that screen, which we're gonna get to soon. Cruise control is no longer a stock down below. It's actually right here. Fun fact, the cruise control symbol with the car is the automatic cruise control. So when I push that, it's gonna say radar ready. I get the little car right there in green with the arrow. But say I want regular cruise control. I press and hold that button and the arrow changes its location and the car disappears. So that's the normal cruise control, not radar cruise control. That's not gonna stop if it senses something. But if I'm in radar cruise control, I can actually set the following distance here and the van will sense cars in front of it and it'll slow down and speed back up. I can change the sensitivity right here to three different following distances. The way it pretty much works is I press radar, hit set, and I can change the speed like this and you'll see the speed on the top right. To cancel, I hit the cancel button or I simply just push the brake or I can just turn off the radar. So it makes it easy to use and easy to see and it all lights up at night. This will go through my music tracks and this is a mode button to go through AM, FM, Bluetooth, Sirius radio. And fun fact, it also counts as a mute button. So if I press and hold this, it'll mute slash pause the music. So that's the steering wheel. So far we broke down driver door, left side of dash, both stocks. Oh, I forgot. We didn't do both stocks. Wipers. It's almost the same down the board for all cars, but if you click it down once, it goes to intermittent, and I can change how often it goes. If I click it down again, it goes low. Click it down again, it goes high. This whole section, that's gonna be for your back wiper. I only have two options. Well, three, off, intermittent, and on. There's no intermittency level for the back. It's not as important, but I have a couple symbols here. Let me just get the right angle. Remember, the square windshield is always the back windshield. The wedged is always gonna be the front. If you think about it and you look through your windows, it makes sense, because this is kind of like what's coming on and this is what's behind. If you look behind you in the mirror, I mean, it's round, but it looks square. This looks more wedged out. Not important, but if you pull this towards you, it's gonna do the front. If you push it away, it's gonna do the rear, and you see the consistency with the squares here for the rear symbol. The dotted lines are just your washer fluid squirting out. Now I can officially say we did both stocks. And we went over this. I'm trying to keep the pace up so we don't have a 40 minute video. Let me turn this down so we don't have all the wind. All right, great. 
So the USB plug is right here with a dust door slash moisture protector door. So you'll be plugging it in in a down motion. And that's going to help you activate your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, which will let you have your map and your apps from your phone right here. Select apps, of course. We're going to do this area down here, and then we're going to work our way up. The shifter is designed for a nice overhand grip. Reverse. Backup cameras right there with bumper line, one, two, and three feet away, and a center line for the center of the vehicle. Neutral. And drive. If I go over and drive, I can actually toggle forward or back through the gears, which I'll see on the bottom left of the MID. So I have maximum control for a sportier drive or if I'm going uphill in the snow. For example, say it's snowy out, I can put in second gear, keep those RPMs where they need to be, and just have a little bit more control. Of course, throttle control is going to be key there. Back to park. When I put in park, this little guy lights up. And I also get a red park uh, light right over here. That means my parking brake is on. That's automatic. So it actually releases when I put it in drive. See? And it re-engages when I put it in park. All on its own. Simple. Less to worry about. And speaking of brakes, I have to buckle up for this feature. Brake hold. Great for the traffic. Uh, great for the drive through When I push this, I'm going to get a little green symbol right there. But when I'm in drive, I'm going to see it say holding gold. Once I see the gold, I can release the hold because the car does all the hold for me while I'm in drive. Then what I can do is I can go forward a couple feet like so. The gold releases. And once I come to a stop, you'll see the gold. And I can let go again. So use that however you would like. Don't forget, put it back in park when you're done. Or the car will yell at you. Drive modes are right over here. If I push this up, the MID will actually light up red on the top and bottom, and it's going to say sport mode on the top. If I pull it down one, that releases back into normal mode. And if I pull it down one again, it's going to light up green, and it's going to say eco. Eco mode is going to depower me a little bit, but boost my gas economy. Normal is going to be a blend, and sport is really going to open up that hybrid system and give you the torque that you want. I'll keep it here. EV mode, when the battery is charged more than 75%, I can hit this, which is not letting me now, but once the battery has regenerated on its own past a certain percent, which I believe is 75 for the new generation, it'll help you keep the vehicle in electric vehicle mode only at low speeds. And if you want to see how much the battery is charged, besides seeing it here in the vehicle info menu, it's just under half. I can also see it here. I would go to menu, info, eco, there it is. You get a cool little diagram. And we're gonna get to that in just a minute. If I lift this up, I have more cup holders with a straight line here for a phone. Another two cup holders over here and some knickknack holders over there. Speaking of storage on the door card, I got lots of storage over here. A deep one and a shallow one. A non-slippy kind of storage over here. There's my handle, and then I got storage and bottle holders over there. So lots of storage in the Sienna. They call this a bridge console, so I can stick book bags, purses, whatever I want down there. If I push this, the magic door opens, and the floodgates to even more storage are opened, and another USB and USB-C. I personally wish we were getting two USBs there, but it is what it is. Let me know in the comments, do you use the USB-C? Or do you do what I do and just take your new Apple uh, plug and throw it in the closet to never be used and replace it with an aftermarket USB that's longer? To each their own. Down below on the bridge console, when I'm under the bridge, I have a 12-volt plug for some old-school accessories with a flip-down door. So instead of flip up, they flip it down so it's an easy entry right there. No plugs over here, but lots of space. And I also like this because we got a lot of airflow here. So if you have some foot heat on or some foot AC, the air is flowing uh, very evenly, which is nice. And I have a divider on the shelf so my things don't slide all over the place. And identical storage on the passenger side. All right, moving on up to climate control. This car has heated seats, three different levels. Off, high, medium, and low. Both sides. 
Toyota tries to keep it as simple as possible, and what I like personally is that they give you an actual tactical control instead of everything being up here. So you have your two different temperatures with their symbols right next to them on the screen. And I can change... Look at that multitasking. I can have all different temperatures, and like I said, the back passengers, which is this little bubble, they can have their own as well. Or I can sync it. I can change the fan speed to the front right here. Which I'm going to turn down so it doesn't get a lot of wind noise. When I hit rear, the bubble changes. Ready? Now we're in the bubble. The word bubble really helps me. Now I can change the bubble. See? This is the rear bubble. I can change the bubble here. Very cool. I can change that bubble. And then if I want to get out of my bubble, I'm back in the front. And it shows you a glance of what's in that rear bubble, what's going on. So in the back, as people start changing stuff in their, dis their display control right there, you can see what they're doing in the bubble. So this is us, and that's them. And of course, I can sync it all, and then control it as a whole, and even sync to them too. Mode is going to change my air direction. It just cycles through. Most people leave it on this. Remember, if you're using the AC, you want to use Recirculate on the hot days, so that's why they're next to each other. Makes sense, doesn't it? And your front and rear defrost are next to each other because Toyota figures if you want to see out of the front windshield, you probably want to see out of the back. Then I can turn the system off. I can simply resume by turning this up. And if I hit Auto, it's going to work like the, uh, kind of like the thermostat in an apartment or hotel or if you got central air. Super simple, super easy to read. Like pretty much all Toyotas now, you have the infotainment system, big bezels. This could have been trimmed up a little bit, but I'm not a designer. I just work with them. But you got these big bezels here, and you have your hard buttons on the sides. Very common theme with Toyotas. Hard buttons with a, a scroller, and then the actual touchscreen. So going through, I have the home. That's a great place to see different information all at once. Of course, I can touch something, and it'll dominate the screen. Menu is where you'll spend a lot of time. You can change things like your... Your uh, color theme, say I want to go red for XSE, check that out. Yeah, but my personal favorite is actually blue and black. To me, that's easiest on the eyes. To each their own, let me know what you think. I can see info, remember this? There you go, so this tells me that the battery is sending power to MG1, and MG1 is just one of the electric motors that's going to regenerate the battery. Of course, with a hybrid, it also collects energy from the brakes. It's called kinetic braking, and it sends that back into the battery as well. If you have the all-wheel drive variant, you'll see MG number two, MG1's best friend, and that will power the back axles separately. This gets very involved, so I'm only going to skim this. Uh, fun fact, you can remember what screen you're in because it says right here. So see, if I'm in home, it says home. If I'm in menu, it says menu. So you'll never be lost. Now at nighttime, say this is a little bright, it's a little distracting for you, or your eyes are just a little, little tired that day and you don't want all this stuff, but you still want your music. You hit the menu, display, screen off, and you'll still have music and it'll be nice and dark. And then what you would do is go over here and I can turn the brightness down. A plus. And to resume the screen, you hit any button, but I'll hit the menu. And I can even hit climate here to operate the climate from the screen. Pretty interesting. Me personally, I'm not a big fan of the operation of the climate control on the screen. Toyota, if you ever find my small YouTube channel, please keep the tactical climates. They're awesome. And a lot of people agree. They like the buttons here. Here's my audio. That goes through all my different sources. When I'm listening to an audio source, I can even change the uh, settings for my treble mid and bass. When I press that, it'll go to the Toyota map. If it doesn't have the Toyota navigation standard, it will prompt you for plugging in your phone to the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So once you're plugged in, it'll go right to Waze or Google Maps or Apple Maps or whatever you like to use. On to the right side. I have Seek and Track for my music, phone, which will show my contacts, call history, favorites, etc. once I'm linked in with Bluetooth, and then apps for my very controversial Intune App Suite. Toyota people, let me know what you think about Intune App Suite. I'm not going to comment. Moving up. I have the auto dimming rear view mirror. Let me get some focus action here. I need a little light. So you have home link for three different garages. 
the little green button here, the little green light, that just means that you have your auto dimming feature working. Basically, it senses light from behind you and it gets dark on its own, so there's no flip switch. If you're wondering how to link these up, it's a little different for each manufacturer or garage door opener, so you may have to break open the booklet. Moving up top, I have my SOS, so that's my Safety Connect. When you register to Safety Connect, you push the button once to talk to somebody. If you push it again, it'll actually send out an SOS signal to help save you. If the airbags go off, it's going to send out that signal automatically. Then I have off for the lights, door, and on right now. For these lights, you just push this little wedge, and you have these two bright, almost like an alien ship coming to take you into Toyota. Or turn it off. And then I have the ventilation. So that's a little picture of the vent. If I push that, it opens up a little bit for vent. Of course, know your weather ahead of time or you're going to be in for a wet surprise. And then I push this down to close it. And then this is going to be the open all the way. There it is. Press and hold for two seconds and it opens right up. Pro tip. Once it's open, I have a little bit more. But I'm going to go ahead and press and hold the close button to close it and let go. Fully automatic. And of course I have my door controls for the left, right, and the hatchback. You have to be in park to operate those. And it's going to give you an audible beep when you do that. So that's everything up top. The sun visors are a slide action. So when it's on the side, you can slide it side to side when the sun is in that awkward space. And I have my lights here with the mirror. My visibility windows are on each side over here. So look at the visibility here. Very good visibility. And my pretty decent size glove box with the college course of Toyota Sienna. Lastly, you have a locking mat on the uh, passenger side and on the driver's side, which we're starting to see in a lot of the bigger Toyotas. And locking is going to be standard in all of them. That's so these don't slide under your uh, brake pedal. So I see some people still in 2021, they have these nice Toyota stock mats and they buy mats to put on their mats. And it's defeating the purpose because that could, not this little piece of paper, but that could slide under here and reduce your braking power by a lot. So don't do that guys. If you want to upgrade your mats, get ones that fit, spend the money, it's not that much, or keep what you got. This is good stuff and they last a long time. You just brush them down. You know, rub them with a little bit of a, uh, a tiny, tiny bit of tire shine and a cloth, and it will give them that nice dark color. Anyway, it's not a maintenance video. All right, let's take some time to see the space. I will say you can have a family of six foot tall people and you know people will no longer be too upset back here you just recline the seat a little bit and, and you're good and there it is for the overview let's cap it up so there it is the 2021 yes i know i have the fob on me that's just the car let me know it's still on the 2021 toyota sienna XSE front wheel drive. Just a thing to remember, all of the Siennas now are hybrid. Don't be afraid of the hybrid. If you have hybrid questions, let me know in the comments. Remember to check out my key fob video in the description below. I really appreciate all the support I've been getting on the channel. Please share this with somebody that you think might benefit from it. And until then, we'll see you in the next one.